Thank you, Sebastian, and I, uh, everybody. So what I'm going to do today is more a uh, case-oriented presentation. But first, let's give a little bit of context. So as you may be aware of, ACES is more, more used everywhere, which is a pretty good thing as shows are more and more complex. For example, right now in Rodeo, we have three, three pure uh, ACES shows. One of them has 13 uh, camera lens couples uh, from Ari Alexander Morphic uh, Spherical to GoPro, including Phantom or Red Dragon. So basically, without ACES, it would be a mess. Having ACES allows us to remove a lot of complexity in the show so we can uh, actually focus on other problematics. But actually, it is also true that the world is not 100% ready for ACEs. For example, on the client side, uh, the plate we are receiving, also the colors they are giving us are not always ACEs friendly, let's say. So it can be calls that are very intense and to make them ACEs ready is not really nice. Uh, and also the tools we are using, especially the third party tool, are not always ready to deal with ACEs as some of the algorithms that are behind can be really bound to sRGB. So concessions are needed for now uh, to be able to work with uh, ACEs, some little one. So some example of concession uh, we, d we do or, and that were actually um, said by, the, by different people at SIGGRAPH uh, this year, is that uh, it was kind of obvious from the start that ACES was not a working space, it was an exchange uh, space. So we had to choose a smaller gamut space in order to work in it. And because we choose a smaller gamut space, we introduce those negative value we need to handle when we were working with them. And last year I evoked briefly what we are doing in Photoshop in order to optimize the dynamic in the 16-bit uh, environment on Photoshop and improve, um, improve uh, the relationship between matte painting and compositing. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about today uh, is more about compositing. So uh, as you may be aware of, compositing is a very sensitive step uh, because most of what um, the camper are doing are actually color related. So for example, they do a lot of keys, keys are color selection, they do a lot of dispel, dispel is the action of removing the flare that can be introduced by the green or the blue screens. So if you're working in some plate where the colors are not totally what they are supposed to be, it's really painful for them to use those tools. So for example, if you have a green, but the green has a yellow cast in it, it will be a real struggle for them to actually do their work. That's why at Rodeo, among other reasons. We are actually white balancing our plate from the start, so what the artists are working on are actually uh, neutralized plate. And from the start, everything we are doing is relative to uh, those uh, neutralized colors. So the first time we had a, an IC show, actually, uh, IC's 1-0 was not out, so we had to find a color space to work in, and we chose Red 2020. And it happened to work very well. Artists were very happy with it. But when we started our second show, ACES 1 was hard, and it was really natural to go for ACES CG as we wanted to be as near as possible from uh, the standard. So the big difference, well, actually, if you look in terms of gamut, it's not that different. Uh, visually, it's not that visible. But ACCG is uh, perfectly embedding DCI-P3 where Red 2020 was only almost doing it. But the big difference that there is between the color space and that is annoying for us is actually Red 2020 is a D65 color space, like sRGB. But ACCG is a D61, uh, D60 sorry, uh, color space. So why is it a problem? As I evoke in uh, my introduction, there's a lot of tools, including in Nuke, or plugins that are based on sRGB, so that are D65 tools. That, so th this means that when we are working using D60 color space, uh, the value, the color value one, is not, correspond, uh, is not going to correspond to uh, our neutral white, the one we choose when we white balance our plate. So to show you a little bit, uh, to show you some actually colors, uh, and demo you the, the problem, what I actually 
did is take an ACES page on which there was a color chart. I converted it into ACCG, ACCG D65, and REC2020. You, the yellow node that uh, you are seeing is the, the tool that we are using to uh, semi-white, uh, uh, semi-automatically white balance our plate. The first purple node is actually the white balance. So the three plates are white balance. And the last purple node you see are actually the color put in uh, that correspond to the look uh, we want to see. So what is important to note is that on the two D65 variation, I'm actually reverting uh, to D60. So the look, the general look, remains the ACES one. And actually the problem really happened during the work. So the work here is symbolized with the rotopane node, that is the green node uh, I put between the two dots. And in this uh, rotopane node, what I did is actually uh, draw some little circle with a neutral value to show you uh, where, where is the impact. So on the top, you just have the uh, plate uh, that were converted in the different color space. So you can slightly see some differences. And below, you can see the result with the white balance and the color protein applied. So the first thing to note is that if you look at the background and at the color charts, color are exactly the same. But when you look at the dot I draw, there's a difference. So here's a, a close up. So in order you can see better the problem. So uh, the circle that are on the 65 side actually corresponds uh, to the neutral white we choose at the beginning uh, of uh, our white balance. And the D60 uh, is the result we get when we work into the D60 color space. So this is a slight difference, but as I told you, at composing step, even a slight difference is a struggle we want to avoid. So actually, the solution is already in the demo. It's really simple. We just have to use ACCG D65. It's a totally reversible transformation. And as we revert it uh, before applying the look and before delivering our ACS plate, this has no impact on the ACS pipeline. So basically, this is just a temporary life hack. Actually, uh, the vendor, they are working uh, at uh, resolving those problems. So at some point, we will not need this anymore. But this is, this, it is not because everyone is not ready for ACs that this is not time to, to go for ACs. Actually, this pipeline, even with this little uh, trick, is a perfectly working ACs pipeline that is saving our life uh, on an everyday basis. And because we are in that, that ACs pipeline, we are relying on a framework that is strong, that is well-defined, and that allows some room for doing that. So, yeah, we should go for it. <laughs> and yeah, we are hearing better. Surprise. <laughs>